So if you want to play light gun games on your cab, you're gonna need a Wii sensor bar like this one. This is the Mayflash wireless sensor bar. It's both Bluetooth and the IR sensor bar that you need to get one of these working. Uh, if you wanna use two guns, you're either gonna need two of these most likely, or you can maybe get a little Bluetooth dongle for the second one. The same IR sensor will work for both but you are going to need uh, to make sure you can get both of these registered under Bluetooth. Um, there's some nice gun controllers out here, out there. There's a couple versions. Here's a nice black one that looks really nice with a black Wiimote. And here's a white one that looks nice with a white Wiimote. Uh, I personally prefer the black, it looks nice. This trigger is a little squeaky. There's probably spring in there that I can grease up. Uh, this one feels a little bit more comfortable, but it's white. It doesn't look as cool as an all-black gun does, but it is pretty cool too. So when you get your sensor bar, you just have to mount it somewhere. Here you can see I have it mounted underneath my marquee, and I just have a hole for the wire to go through, and it plugs into a USB port. So here's the configuration you need to do to get your Wii Mode's working with main. Just open the main interface once you've uh, extracted the files. And then go into configure options and go into device mapping. So here's what it looks like by default. It says light gun is keyboard, mouse is mouse, analog stick is keyboard. So what I have found works the best is to actually make a light gun, light gun, make mouse light gun, and that will fix um, games like Area 51 um, and some others. And you, you need these to be light gun so that you can reload by shooting off screen. If you leave them on mouse, it might still work, but you will have trouble reloading. And then the last one you need to do is analog stick because some of these games like Jurassic Park and Terminator 2, their guns are actually analog sticks rather than actual light guns. So you also wanna set this one to light gun. Set all three of these to light gun and then return to the previous menu and save your configuration. Now uh, the main settings will be set correctly and now when you go into the games themselves, you can map the individual controls to your Wiimote and then the games will work. You'll have to set this mode before you start MAME or at least launch the game because if you change it afterward, it doesn't recognize the controls. So here you can see I'm in mode three, mode four, which is Wii, mode one, mode two, which is the mode I want. But if I had started this in a different mode, it's not gonna recognize it. So if I try to map light gun analog, and I'm moving my Wiimote, it's not mapping it, nothing. Because I changed the mode after I launched the game. So instead, if I exit, and restart already in mode two, then it will work. In fact, you should be able to see my cursor is already moving around. All right, as you can see, my mouse seems like it's already working, but if I try to put coins in, start, and try to work the game, you'll notice, oh, it's not working. So, that's because it's not mapped correctly. So now that I can have everything mapped, we can come in here. We can see it thinks player one is gun one and player two is gun two. Well, the gun I'm using currently registers as gun two. So to fix that, I hit player one, pull my trigger. Oh, you can see it registered the X movement. Let me undo that and try it again. Gun two, B button. Now for X analog, 
Now I have to try to do this carefully. Let's just move left and right. Well, if you did it wrong, just uh, go down, back up, try it again. Be careful about your direction. There we go, X. Go to Y analog. Now just go up and down. If you get both, try it again. Be careful about only going up and down. There we go, I got Y. If I wanted to map the A button, I could map that as well to something. Uh, but these other buttons, you're not gonna be able to really map in mode two. The plus is always enter. The home button is the windows key. The minus key is escape. You can map those, but those keys that do other things. Um, the windows one's gonna be the trickiest. You can map enter and escape, but by default escape is gonna exit your game. So you have to remap UI cancel if you were to use that minus. The one and two uh, do volume up and down. And uh, in mode two, you can't really remap those. So the only buttons you're really gonna use are the A, the B, and maybe the plus and minus, as long as you unmap UI cancel. All right, so now that I got everything mapped, I can tab out or escape out, return the machine and pause it. And now I can play. There we go. Reload works. Okay, here we are with Jurassic Park. I haven't mapped the controls for this yet, so you'll see that it doesn't work yet. It just says press start. I'm moving the mouse around and nothing's moving. We're moving the gun around, nothing's moving. Fire doesn't do anything. So let's press P to pause, tab to bring up this menu. And let's go, you can do it for general and it would affect all analog stick games, or you could just do this one game. So here we have to map things again. You'll see it says gun one for the trigger. So let's push that trigger, gun two, B zero. Analog stick. And again, we'll have to be careful to only go left or right, but again, analog. If you're too close, back up further. There we go. Analog stick Y. If you get X, redo it. We only want Y. There we got Y. And that should be all we need for this game. So tab or escape gets back out, get paused. I'll press P to unpause. And now you'll see that the site is moving and I can shoot. So this will fix Operation Wolf, Terminator 2, Jurassic Park, any other games that use analog stick. For Terminator 2, you're going to have to calibrate the guns, and it's going to make you calibrate both guns. Uh, so if you only have one gun to start with, what you can do is just map the controls for both Player 1 and Player 2 to the same gun, and then you can calibrate. And the calibration menu, I believe, is F2. That takes you into there, and then that's how you can calibrate. F2 is like the default button for the service menu. If you remap it to something else, you'll need a different one. But that's how you get into it. Once you have them calibrated once, you don't have to do it again. Uh, and then you'll be good to go. You can just launch the game and play. Put some coins in. And start. And 
And actually my Wiimotes give me some force feedback right now as I'm holding this trigger. It's kind of a cool effect. It makes it feel like I'm holding an Uzi gun. Now, if you see two crosshairs like I have going on right now, that's because one is the game crosshair and one is the main crosshair. So what you can do is go into the tab menu again, go to crosshair options, and you can turn the P1 visibility to off. And then you won't see the crosshair anymore. So now you just see the game crosshair. Not all games have crosshairs, so that's why it's in there. It's a good option to have. Some games you'll want it on, some games you won't. And it seems to be uh, pretty good at remembering which games you want the crosshairs on for and which ones you don't. Now for Wii games with the Dolphin emulator, you can set your controller to just be a Wiimote and use your sensor bar in mode four and it'll work out of the box. But I kind of prefer that it thinks it's a mouse because then I don't have to switch the mode on my sensor bar. And what you have to do is you just have to come into configure here and you have to make sure that you map the A and B buttons the way you want. I think it does a zero and B one by default. And then there's some games where you might need to plus and minus. So make sure you map those and they'll show up as escape and return. And then this way you won't have to change the, the sensor bar to mode four and back out to mode two as you play main games. Of course, House of the Dead two and three on Wii is a great game. Now you notice it says press one to skip, but one in mode two does volume, so it doesn't do anything. So till then, this is a little annoying, so you can't skip the uh, dialogue. Reload does work though. I can go off screen. I'm a little too close to the screen, so the reload is a little sensitive. It seems to work better going left and right than it does going up and down. Ghost Squad's another great Wii game, and as you can see, to play this one, you have to map the plus button. So if you don't map this plus, uh, you won't be able to start, so it's pretty important for this one. Dog McCree is another cool game. This one is a little sensitive with the reload. You kind of have to go left and right, up and down. It doesn't seem to reload as well. Maybe up it might, but down it seems to get stuck. You better take up some target practice first. There's a mean bug that showed up. And I'm scared. Good. There's one more important thing. Now this one, the uh, shooting sound actually comes through the Wiimote on a real Wii. So in this one you don't hear the gunfire because it's expecting to go through the Wiimote, which it doesn't do in mouse mode. In Wiimote, Wiimote mode, mode four, it does try to do it. It's a little, hit or miss in my experience. Sometimes it works pretty good, sometimes not so much.
Although you can reload up, you just have to point up and push the trigger. Reload down doesn't work though. Uh, it doesn't go down far enough to the side or up on this game and pull the trigger. If you played it more than once, you know which guys are going to shoot in which order. It makes it a lot easier. So my cabinet is an art, a work in progress here. You can see I don't have my artwork on yet. I'll get rid of the keyboard. I'll drill some holes for some holsters for my guns. Um, but I do have light up marquee and uh, got um, hyperspin mostly configured the way I want. A bunch of games loaded on it. And uh, once I get the artwork done, finish configuring some additional games, it'll be good to go.